So hello everybody, welcome back, or welcome if this is new to you. I'm Mel Hauser, I use she, they pronouns, and I'm the executive director of All Brains Belong. Welcome to Brain Club. Let me share a screen and get us oriented to our program tonight. So uh, first, before we get started, um, closed captioning is enabled. You just have to toggle it on if you'd like to use it. Depending on your version of Zoom, you might see the live transcript closed captioning icon. If not, look for the more dot 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 and choose show subtitles or uh, hide subtitles if you want to turn them off. Um, so first, to orient you to our program, Brain Club is All Brains Belongs Community Education Program, where we cover a wide variety of topics related to neurodiversity and inclusion. We explore topics of concern, um, inviting community members both within and outside of the All Brains Belong community into conversation about these topics, uh, working on developing relationships and building bridges between people and between ideas learning together about new approaches and possibilities for social change. Brain Club is about creating a more neuro-inclusive world. Participation in Brain Club, uh, just as any All Brains Belong program, involves following a community agreement, uh, which is created by our community advisory board and our participant task force. Community agreements, as we'll explore in tonight's program, are part of neuro-inclusive space because there is no one right way to participate. Um, and there are expectations of the collective um, that have a big impact on our community and our ability to be in shared space together. And the level of safety um, at Brain Club and in all our programs is really important to us that we create um, a space that is unlike most other spaces because we're really creating a space that is in fact radically different. Um, Lizzie's gonna put a link in the chat uh, to our uh, community agreement. And while we hope that your Brain Club experience feels safe and supportive, please note that Brain Club is not a support group. Our limited time together is not to be used for seeking solutions to personal or family problems or requesting medical or mental health advice or advancing any individual priorities. Brain Club is about, it's a learning community for neural inclusion and social change. That's the focus tonight. It's a shared educational experience, um, like a think tank or a, a classroom. Um, it's, it's really about transformation at the group and collective community level. So you're invited to explore today's uh, big picture theme and think about how the topic uh, connects with your own life, your own experiences, um, if at all, um, and be part of a group of other people who want to make a difference and, and change the world. Um, so tonight I um, am really thrilled to uh, announce the launch of Brain Club 2.0. Um, Brain Club uh, has gone, uh, uh, we had a, a, a nice month of um, doing a lot of discovery, gathering of feedback um, from both folks who've been presenters and folks who've been, you know, multi-year attendees. Um, and what I'm really excited about um, is a new format of Brain Club. Um, in our 45 minutes together, um, we will have um, a, a presentation, a community panel, um, as, as we usually do, but around a really specific theme of um, neuro-inclusive community and the specific ways in which we try to model that here at All Brains Belong. And uh, because we have received uh, feedback from folks who have been um, you know, vulnerable and generous enough to share their stories as panelists, we have received feedback um, that it can be really distracting and sometimes even dismissive when there is a really robust chat going on while someone is sharing their, their, their sacred story. So out of respect to panelists, chat will be disabled during the presentation. So instead, what this will look like um, is, I'll go back in a second, um, we'll have a part one of a panel presentation. We'll pause um, for questions, comments, um, and I'm at, uh, we'll invite you to consider um, as we watch um, this panel presentation together about what it means to you to communicate with intentionality in neuroinclusive culture. So we'll talk about that question and then we'll watch the rest of the panel presentation. So here are some ideas of what you can do while the chat is closed, um, because that might be new um, for, for many of you. 
So um, we invite you to consider setting up your space, maybe with food or drink or focus tools, or maybe a place to take notes, whether that be on pen and paper or a document to type into, maybe you wanna draw, whatever it is that helps you regulate and focus. Um, some ideas that our community uh, uh, task force came up with about some, if you need some ideas of what else you can do to while the chat is off, um, taking notes, drawing, doodling, working on, you know, puzzles or games or even doing your physical therapy exercises. Um, it's the idea of whatever you need in order to, you know, learn, um, watch, listen, um, whatever you need doing while we listen to our panelists. So tonight's panel um, on neuroinclusive culture, well, you'll hear from our panelists exploring really the purpose of Brain Club, um, which is education and social cultural change, um, reflections on the difference between a support group and a supportive education space, and then getting into the big picture of what defines neuroinclusive space, including what's a community agreement and why is that important? And what is being asked of participants in neuroinclusive space and why? So um, before we uh, kick off our panel, I just wanna say a huge, a huge thank you to our panelists, um, Liz, Sarah, Lizzie, Rye, and Kel. And also special thanks to David, Nita, Sierra, Steve, Amy, Olivia, and Sarah for um, the, the feedback that went into tonight's presentation. So um, I'm gonna stop share. I am going to... Set up our new space and reshare with the video. What is Brain Club 2.0? Like, what, like, why are we, um, you know, like zooming out, really identifying the core values, the format that makes the most sense to deliver education and broker these alliances to try to change culture? So what has stood out about our about these conversations about like the the the, the Brain Club experience we are looking to offer the community? Well, I'll say that I think something that really shifted my perspective was when Kel described the Brain Club as more of a classroom setting, you know, um, um, and less of a less of a support group, because that really said to me like, oh, there's a there's a purpose for going here. The purpose is learning. And then there's support built around it in in terms of the chat and in terms of the ability to ask questions and to engage, but it's really for a higher purpose of expanding your mind um, and, and your skills and, and kind of, you know, growing the skills that you need to be able to engage in the space. Yeah, Liz, I think a lot of people get confused about that, right? Like, you know, you come and you're like, oh, it's people and there's people who maybe have something in common with me. Like this, the, the only frame of reference I have for this is a support group. And like, you can tell me this is not a support group, but my expectations are that of a support group. So Initially about, I saw it more for it. I saw it more as a support group or more as a supportive, like this is a, or I focused on the supportive nature of like this is a supportive community and i i kind of missed in a lot of ways this is social justice and social change um like the purpose why we're here is to sort of figure out like to look look at to take a big picture look at 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 um what's you know what's happening to um the neurodivergent community at large or what's happening around some of these issues that affect the neurodivergent community and and how do we and how do we create meaningful change and um and i think part of that was also distorted by like what i needed or wanted brain club to be it's sort of like i was and in a lot of ways 
you know, I, I had my own pet peeves and there were certain people that I bl was blaming and I, I wanted to sort of trash because I was mad at them <laughs> and, um, and, and or certain groups that I was blaming and wanted to trash because I, you know, I had a grudge against them. And it's like, and to think about, well, Brain Club is actually isn't a place for that either. It's more like, how do we build bridges with people who might be members of groups that I might have, a, I, I might have had a bad experience with a member of that group, but um, there are pr plenty of people in that group who would be really good allies. Um, and if I don't, and if I don't piss the entire group off by just trashing it and throwing it out, um, and so, uh, and so it's sort of like, oh, Brain Club is a place where I kind of need to sort of set us. It's not my little like my little like personal ground to like air my all of my grudges with all of humanity it's a place to like look for where i can build alliances that would actually create effective social change Has anybody ever thought about like how how have how have did, did you once navigate that shift or you know how, how you've seen others navigate that shift I can't speak to the shift because I guess I, I always thought it was a classroom, <laughs> but I also am newer. I've only been around for the last year or so. And so like in that time, while my um, new, pa new patient paperwork was being like was pending, right? I had access to Brain Club and it was for me what it was, was just a space where healthcare professionals were talking about really interesting things that felt really relevant to me. Um, but I can't necessarily speak to the, like, the, I just never felt, oh, this is a peer support space for in my body. But again, I'm, I'm newer and I've only been a few times and I, I go when the topic is really engaging to my mind. That's, that, that's helpful, Kel. I actually didn't know that, that, that aspect of, of your story to brain club i didn't know that at all um and it 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 is it is it's it's interesting to think like is there also it because because for some people there's a difference it's like our oh, brain club used to have eight people and it was the same eight people every time and like we, we got to know each other and every, everyone felt like you know maybe more comfortable sharing and i think that as brain club grew we really shifted to the you know, panelists are sharing. We do mostly community panels now um, as a way of exploring like the applications of a topic. Um, but we have been trying to carve out a space where people can listen to those stories and learn from those stories. And I think sometimes um, there's been distractions from that. Um, and in particular, receiving feedback from a panelist that when there is, you know, a really active side conversation going on in the chat that has really nothing to do with their story, but that hasn't felt good to them. So hence this group coming together to talk about, you know, how, how do we create a space where people can come and they can learn about neuro-inclusive culture, um, you know, at least within this micro-ecosystem of all brains belong. Um, Mel, what's what's coming up for me when you talk about that is when you talk about um, that you switch to kind of a panel format, I was just reflecting on like what, what that change, I think, signaled to me um, as I was progressing through Brain Club is that First of all, I think um, I think the first thing that struck me was it's so wildly vulnerable for these panelists to come on and to share these stories, you know, and um, and to have that 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 interaction with you when you're interviewing them because you're sharing your story along with the panelists, which is which is so valuable, and then um, and then also the panelists and your interactions with them were the first place that I started to see kind of like the shared language of, it was the first time I heard the term access needs. 
and you know you and the panelists are kind of modeling like you know here's how access needs you know play out in different settings you know here's how you know ableism thwarts access needs um and looking at kind of like the systemic issues around that it's not a personal dumping ground it's a it's a it's a it's a learning space and a, and an and an an alliance building space to actually where i could actually be effective about creating social change not just bitching about what's wrong and i, I don't know if any of that's copyable because it's got too many swear words in it, but <laughs> oh no, we're gonna use it. We're totally gonna use it. Yeah. No, right? Because like that, the re this, is, this, is, this is about this is about culture change, um, and you're absolutely right. You know, part of you know we we use Brain Club as an actual um an actual structure to broker alliances. We bring people into Brain Club as guest presenters who are not connected with the All Brains Belong community, or they may not have any idea about neurodiversity or how that plays out in their lives, but they, you know, they're, they, they, they meet us, they are happy to be supportive, and they engage in a panel discussion. And they leave with like some education um, that connects to the thing that they were coming to present about. And so yeah. and then they go off into the world and now they know a little bit about neurodiversity and inclusion. Um, yeah. So 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 when we um, have, um, you know, it's, it's completely understandable when we have, um, you know, uh, participants who have, they don't have any spaces to come to where they quote, get to air their grievances, or they get to express themselves, or they get to, you know, X, Y, Z, um, they, 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 they do it with a bounds, right? And then that, unfortunately, has some negative consequences um, on our ability to actually try to influence the world outside of Aubrey's Belong that we've been trying to invite in. Why do we need structure to do that? Like, why can't we just show up and, you know, all brings belong? When just like thinking about the issues that have come up at Brain Club, um, it seems to me that, you know, as someone who's ADHD, I can see like, I can kind of empathize with, oh, there's a space where all, all brains belong. Like, I'm finally welcome here. I can see there being like a rush of excitement of just like unmasking completely and just like letting it all hang out. I've been there, I've done that, like in different spaces for sure, right? But then it's like, oops, I broke a behavioral agreement. So the like then my next question is like, okay, so if all like we definitely feel clear all brains belong. Does that mean all behaviors belong? I and I you know, when we were talking about it before, Mel, I hope it's okay for me to say that you very enthusiastically said no. <laughs> no, not all behaviors belong. <laughs> so then it's like, it just kind of brings up this very critical question then of like, what are we asking people to, how are we asking people to behave in this space where we want everyone to feel like they, they can belong? Does that... That speaking to absolutely so like you are welcome um and i i, I don't know when, when i think about like what is truly required for a neuro inclusive space it all comes down to a, sh a shared understanding a shared understanding um of like how we're going to be in the space together um uh you know whether someone is you know referring to like ground rules, shared expectation, a community agreement. Um, it's it's like, I can predict what's gonna happen here. That's what makes it safe. And so when something happens outside of what has been named, um, you know, by our community um, as what Brain Club space needs to feel like in order to feel safe, um, a behavior outside of that, even though it may be understandable, um, you know, um, when when anyone becomes dysregulated, they may not have full access to the thinking part of their brain, to their impulse control, to, to all kinds of aspects, all kinds of internal tools or external tools. Um, and um, the collective is expecting the community agreement. Um, and, and that actually reminds me, um, 
I'd love if anyone can speak to like what what is it um, that like shifting to the collective. Um, uh, maybe we can come back to that. But uh, Rai, love to hear from you. Thanks, Mel, um, and everyone. Um, yeah, I, I've been actually thinking about this um, individual versus group. Um, uh, sorry for my alarm. Um, it is 5.52. We have eight minutes. <laughs> um, uh, so I've been, you know, I've been looking at this, um, this idea of when, when we're working so hard to regulate ourselves and we're so excited to be in a new space and it feels really affirming in a lot of ways. And it's maybe finally the first time we've been able to use our voice ever in our life and have somebody listen to us for real. And we have exciting things to say, but we haven't had time to learn the culture um, yet or learn the language yet or learn that and remember and remind ourselves that every neurodivergent person is also neurodiverse and that you know one isn't all and all isn't one that we are all coming with all of the stuff that we were born with and that we then accumulated through traveling through our lives um and then we're being presented to by these amazing people who are you know knowing these important things about the world that we live in and we're taking in this amazing and sacred information about how these people have accumulated all this stuff in their lives and they've turned it into these safety nets and cultural um different ways of knowing um and and so when we look at what's important in the space of brain club we're looking at we're listening to these incredible people. We're treating them like they're amazing people, just like we want to be also treated like we're amazing people when we talk in, about the stuff that we have accumulated and the knowings that we have brought forth in our lives. And, um, and so we're prioritizing that. And so when we do things like turn off the chat, we're like emphasizing, giving that margin of space between like, seeing a thing thinking a thing and saying a thing or doing a thing with our body and that we're allowing that to percolate a little bit slower and to sink in in a way that when we feel it we can then be in charge of our own reactions whether it's a good reaction or a fearful reaction or a angry reaction or a your culture is taking over my culture reaction or whatever those reactions look like or even just like if it's like tons and tons of clapping for the next 10 minutes because it's like the most profound thing we've ever seen. Like even that kind of response, we still need margin to percolate through and let that settle into our own neurodiverse bodies. Um, yeah, so I guess that's what I wanted to say. And if I could just build on what Rai was saying, um, no matter, I, I think the, the the stepping the stepping off place for that for what I was saying for me is no matter what reaction has just come up in me, the human being I'm I'm going to try to talk to or connect with is still going to need respect and dignity, and um and they're going to need me, need me to treat them as if they're a person that if their ideas come from a place of them having thought about what what they uh what what they're thinking and that they're not just sort of out there random willy-nilly that that there's still universal access needs for communicating with another human being and that that those things have to do with things like respect and dignity and belief that and and respect for for how another person has come to have the value system that they have and the beliefs that they have thank you for naming that um and i think that one thing that just stood out to me about what you said is like um, sometimes we see this gap, right, between, you know, of course we believe, um, we, we presume competence and we presume good intentions, but then because of, because mo most of our community has experienced significant relational trauma. And so you come to this space and that, that lives in your body and it's there. And so what comes out whether with mouth words or in the chat, what comes out impulsively is not really connected to intentional thought. And like, I really thought about this thing I'm gonna say, 
it's more like impulsively like you know something comes out in the chat and 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 i think i think it's just transparency it's transparency of like yep relational trauma it's most of the community and so part of coming to it you know i th i think as we distinguish between support i'm here for someone to receive my distress and help me bear it and then like some transformation happens there um as opposed to through a the, the the lens of education if i am dysregulated i think what we're asking people to do is to just be if 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 we're dysregulated you can you're still welcome to be and be in the space and take in what you can or or, or don't take in what you what you cannot but but the idea being that um in those spaces when participation is not intentional or not like or you don't have access for intentional thoughtful participation and communication and connection with other people when you don't have access to that you are still welcome and we ask that you use those times to listen and be in the space with no other demand on you and we need participation to not infringe upon the access needs of others who are able to learn from what is being presented. Yeah. All right, let me figure out how to open up the chat again. Let's see, thanks for your patience with me. Okay. So uh, this is going to be our first discussion pause. Um, and I'm going to bring up our visual support. Go back to share screen. So I'd love to hear if anyone has thoughts either with um, mouth words or in the chat. Um, that part that we just paused at about talking about intentional communication. Um, what does that mean to you? What have you seen that look like or how does that feel to you? Sierra. Um, thanks, Mel. I um, I really appreciated in this. I think the that framework of the difference between support and community, um, and like support and community building. It's a difference. I don't think I really under. I think we talk about it a lot, but not something I totally understood fully, um, until this. And I think I, I really appreciated the ability to just kind of like listen to a panel as somebody who usually is in the chat a lot as somebody who really likes chatting as like a, um, cognitive stim. Um, I really appreciated being able to like have that kind of external factors um, inhibiting some of my impulses and be able to sit and listen and engage in a different way than I often do. Um, and I don't know, that was just a really cool experience for me. Um, and I'm excited about this new version of Brain Club. Awesome. Thank you, Sierra. And, you know, the cognitive stim of the chat really resonates with me, too. Um, I'm using the chat a lot of the times as like a cognitive fidget, like it helps me focus and then like conflicting access needs um, of, well, we've also got folks who are sharing stories um, who, um, you know, uh, are, are, are often um, needing something else. Martha and then Amy.
Martha, if you could unmute. There we go. Boy, this is this is really restrictive. The chat is disabled and I have to wait to be unmuted. I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. Um the the unmuting thing, I don't um I don't think that that is across the board. We can certainly do some um, problem solving around that. Um, that should be, you may have missed at the beginning, um, the description of the community advisory board changing the format of Brain Club, that during the presentation, um, uh, we are watching and listening the presentation and then opening it up twice. We pause uh, once or twice throughout the, the, uh, the Brain Club for, for discussion. Um, thanks, Martha. Amy. I think I just struggled as well unmuting Martha. So it must be, <clears throat> I'm not sure um, what that was. I think that also maybe my settings are different. But anyway, I just wanted to confirm that that was also confusing. There was like a two-step to unmute. Um, so I'm someone who's come to Brain Club for a long time. I've also been a panelist multiple times. And, um, you know, I think that the chat, I think that, I think it is a conflicting access need because for me, when we switched from, uh, sort of the old old way where we were just having a conversation, there wasn't a pre-recorded panel. Um, if I felt like I was able to engage a lot more. And then when we switched to the panel and the chat was rolling, um, like I couldn't participate as much. So I think that the chat was always there, but I think you read it or somebody else would read it. And so I was able to still be a part of the chat and the conversation. And so I think it really change for me when the chat and so I think for me like even tonight <clears throat> knowing that I wasn't like am I missing something in the chat I was able to really sit and be with what people were saying in such a deeper way I felt like the learning experience and my engagement um felt like I wasn't torn and I wasn't like struggling cognitively to try and figure out what's happening in the chat um so I'm I'm kind of excited because I think it could be a balance of both worlds where we get to really learn from community members, we get to learn from um, people that are you know outside of the ABB that maybe could come in and teach you know or we could learn from, and also then we have this opportunity to um, chat during this time as well. So I I really appreciate all the work that you've done, Mel, in the consideration and that even if it's feeling restricted to some folks right now in terms of switching um, or we've had a predictable system that's now changing that can be so hard um, for, for many of us. Um, I just really appreciate all the work that, that the panel did, that the ABB staff has done throughout all of Brain Club, that this is a free community you know, program that we're all benefiting from. And there's so much work behind the scenes that I don't know that everybody's aware of. And I just wanted to, to shout out my appreciation um, for everyone that's been a part of it. Thank you, Amy. And this really, you know, it, it, it's been a, you know, a collective community effort of, you know, so many people, you know, volunteering their time to give feedback and build this structure and like really with such intentionality of how do we come together as a community to navigate so many different aspects of, of conflicting access needs. Um, and just to highlight a couple of um, comments in the chat um, before, I, before we shift to watching the last 10 minutes of the panel. Um, Tracy, I really appreciate your comment. Tracy says, looking forward to learning how to serve the community. What a beautiful sentiment. Thank you. Um, and Martha uh, commenting on, you know, unwritten social rules. Like that is how life is in the neuronormative world. Um, and um, being able to really like in full transparency, like this is what you can expect and this is why and um, this is what it'll look like. Um, so that's, that was, th thank you. Thank you for naming that, Martha. That was certainly a, you know, part of the intentionality of, of this shift. 
So I'm going to reshare screen and we'll uh, watch the last 10 minutes of the panel. Yeah, Lizzie just added to the chat, being, just being is a valid way of participating. Thanks for naming that, right? So being, observing, listening, completely a valid form of participation, which is why we, you know, that's part of our community agreement. That's why we say it that way. And I think that, um, I think what we're gonna really try to start modeling better at Brain Club is what can you do in the space to, to remain in the space if you wanna be in the space other than, you know, using the chat in this particular way. Sarah, you had and just and, and just to, to build on, on what's, what that is, is I, I mean, just, or just to build on that, what, for me, that, that, that just being in the space and that listening, and that is, is, is actually a gift. Um, the, the, the not passing on the dysregulated energy so much of the time, like, so, because so much of the time, um, and we were talking about this earlier, so much of the time, my dysregulated energy is really meant to pass on my pain and to pass on and to pass and, and in some ways even to punish like so that other people know what it's like to feel my pain i inflict my pain on other people and so that and that so i so with that dysregulated energy a lot of times i'm passing on the trauma that i experienced rather than transforming it and so and so just so being being in the space and listening to the, the ideas that people have for how to transform the trauma is both the work of the space and it's also the gift of the space like to be in the space and not and and not just sort of and not just sort of dump the feelings that come to not come to me every time something like triggers uh triggers a memory that's like hard for me which being in this space is going to that's just part of it i can't go over that kind of material without it triggering it so I, I need to learn how to be in this space without passing on my trauma and learning and being able to stay present enough to hear what other people are saying about how to transform it. Thank you, Sarah. I want to speak a little bit directly to this idea of like, what are we asking of a neuroinclusive space or what does that mean for Brain Club here, right? Because like we're saying we are a neuroinclusive space. Um, so, and we're saying all brains are welcome. We're also saying not all behaviors are. So in my mind, that means that we're inherently asking people to have some sort of self, some sort of amount of, or like base level of self-awareness. Do you have a baseline understanding of what it feels like in your body to become dysregulated while in a group space? Do you have strategies for interrupting that before it becomes an impulsive, like spluttering into the space in one way or, or another for, you know, yeah, spluttering is a word, right? Um, <laughs> um, and so like, like Rai was saying, there are some cognitive strategies, right? Or like for me, it's like having, like setting up my space before I'm there. So even before I get to brain club, I'm making sure that I have what I need to support my own regulation. Because like we were talking about on Discord, when we can't access regulation, we can't access learning. Um, so yeah, if there are other, I'm sure I'm missing some, but I want us to make sure that we get in the recording, like what we're actually asking of people who are wanting to be in the space and interact. Like if they can be in it, like we're saying you can be, but now what do you, like what's required in order to interact? Um, Rye? Yeah, you reminded me as you were talking about that of all of the times that I say like, we all have trauma leaking out of our ears, but it's our responsibility for each of us to have our own washcloth to mop it up. And so like when we carry that around, it's taking care of myself over here. And the accountability for knowing our own trauma in relationship with people we do know and in people with people we don't know and in the context of groups um, is really, really important that there's a responsibility to know yourself, but also that makes you more powerful in the space, even if you don't feel powerful in the space. And then it allows that all of our power to come together to change the world in a good way. And that when we're dysregulated, which everybody is sometimes, 
um, when we know what puts us off or what we know um, makes that difficult to mop it up, we can ask for help in those situations, but Brain Club isn't a, a, a time for that kind of, of, of interaction. So like Brain Club brings up a lot of things that remind us of the trauma leaking out of our own ears because we live through it every single day. But, um, but Brain Club isn't for processing that information. Um, and so that's when you take what you've learned at Brain Club and maybe you wrote some notes or maybe you, you know, um, you know, did a thing. Um, but you bring that to a counselor or your doctor or your best friend or your parent or, you know, the people that you care about and who you know can hold you and, you know, um, you know, make you some tea while you mop up the mess with your washcloth, you know, that so you're getting the support you need while not, um, you know, inadvertently or accidentally on purpose, like using a coping mechanism to take something away from other people or the group um, in order to not feel what you feel. Oh, so well said, right? And I think that that really is that shift from the individual to that of the collective. And so it's the, um, the idea that part of um, neuro-inclusive space, um, which, you know, it's kind of radical. Um, it's radical, the idea that we would all decide that we're going to do all this work. Um, we're going to, you know, find a way to be in the space without infringing upon the access needs of other people so that we can all belong in the space. And there's a reason that feels radical. Most other public spaces, people will not be asked of that, which is why most public spaces are not neuro inclusive and we don't feel like we belong there. So it, 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 it simply won't feel like many other places, and that's by intention, um, because that's, that's how we then have the opportunity to take in this information from our presenters and panelists, um, to connect it um, to our own lives, and, and to imagine what's possible. All right, Cal says, Neuroinclusive space is having clear expectations and group agreements, is having many ways of accessing the space and participation, is holding each person accountable to their own behaviors. I think that would actually make a really interesting brain club in and of itself, like like accountability as the title and like exploring I, I, these words and like that's what goes on at brain club, right? Somebody says a word and you're like, nah. Um, but but like, yeah, I know that when I hear that word, I'm going to have a response. Um, and, you know, if I'm not in a place where I can intentionally and meaningfully in, engage in dialogue about it, I'm going to like keep it to myself right now. Um, so, yeah, right. So to create it. And that is one of the things that Brain Club does when Brain Club works, Brain Club provides um a common language and for many of us we need the language in order to understand the thing that we're experiencing if we don't have words for it a lot of our brains like we don't know what to do with it you know what is that oh it's the thing i've experienced for 40 years but didn't really know i was experiencing until you give me a word for it interesting right so so like that common language and actually modeling what kel just said um so we're just we're just playing it out oh what does interaction look like when we're not trying to hurt each other Radical. I think this team has done a, a really amazing job at pulling some, like really highlighting what what is the point of Brain Club. And I think I do whole... think that all all of this discussion that we've been having is is so vital and needs to happen. But the act of having it, I think, grows our brains in different directions that feels really healthy and it's weaving together um, um, something that's stronger. Lizzie was saying that being is a totally valid way of participating too. Um, and, and learning that being is a valid way, um, uh, a form of being is really freeing um, and, and healing to learn. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm reading from Lizzie in the chat. 
um, more we're able to be um, together in this community that we really want to continue building and want to continue um, um, being in together. And so with that, what a really beautiful note to leave on. Um, thank you again to our panelists. And thank you again to all of you for being part of this community and being part of this, um, this, this process, this movement of really um, uh, building the plane as we fly it and trying to um, be responsive to um, you know, feedback and community needs. Um, and so that we can have this forum of learning and have this forum where we can uh, build alliances with people who can help us change the world. And so um, with, uh, with, with that, um, uh, we, we will apply these principles next week when we are joined by um, Song Win from the De Vermont Department of Health and Evelyn Jardy from the Vermont Community Foundation. We're gonna be talking about the process of learning about how to make meetings, hybrid meetings, more inclusive um, with some practical applications for that, both at the, um, uh, the high tech and the very, very low tech version of, of inclusive meetings. Um, so um, I hope you'll join us next week and I hope you have a great week. Bye everybody.